Season 2 of The Bear features a carefully considered progression of flavors that will leave viewers hungry for more. But if you're looking to deconstruct the dramedy, well, right this way, your table awaits. Season 1 of The Bear concluded with a deus ex machina in the form of canned tomatoes. Richie finally gives Carmi the letter that Mikey left behind, which leads to the discovery of the roughly $300,000 in cash that Jimmy lent the previous and late executive chef. Carmi decides to use the money to reopen the beef as The Bear, the family-style fine dining establishment that's been his dream since at least high school. Season 2 quickly comes to a boil when Carmi, Sydney, and new project manager Sugar realize they've underestimated how expensive and involved that process will be. They decide to come clean to Jimmy about the money in hopes he'll be willing to invest even more. Carmi boldly bets that if the restaurant isn't turning a profit in 18 months, he'll sign over the deed. Sugar and Sydney are stunned because it should take at least six months to get a new restaurant off the ground. To get in the black, the gang will have to do it in three. That's a CP. What's a CP? Carmi the Carmi problem. Throughout season two, Carmi and his staff struggle to schedule and pass inspections, as nearly every step forward results in two steps back. Sugar, who reluctantly reveals that she's pregnant, plays the damsel in distress to manipulate Jimmy into twisting some arms so that they can make their launch date. Season 2 of The Bear is an illustration of the adage that things often look worse before they look better. That applies to construction projects, menu development, career prospects, finances, recovery, love, and life. Through a combination of flashbacks and present-day conversations about the past, we learn that Carmi was considerably less cool in high school than we might have imagined. Not only did he speak with a stutter, it seems he never had a girlfriend or went to a party, spending most of his free time doodling in notebooks. The sketches that weren't of pants or food were of a girl who Carmi had a crush on, a spectacled cutie affectionately referred to as Claire Bear. In the show's main timeline, Carmi and Claire have a meet-cute at a convenience store refrigerator in which he pretends not to remember her name and gives her a fake number. Confident Claire gets his real digits off of FAC, and the two begin to hang out on a regular basis. It becomes clear that Carmi really likes Claire Bear and has since childhood, and she'll eventually confess that she's had a major crush on him this whole time too. Nevertheless, the prospect of having a girlfriend stresses him out. In the Christmas episode, Fishes, Carmi gets upset almost to the point of having a panic attack when Mikey and Richie try to set him up with Claire Bear. Later, Richie suggests he won't let good things happen to him. But what's probably going on is that, in the same way Sugar is worried about becoming a mother, he's worried about getting into a relationship because of his family's mental health history and dysfunction. He also realizes that a serious girlfriend could represent an obstacle to his ambitions as a chef. When Carmi offended both Sydney and Marcus near the end of season one, the sous chef and the pastry chef bonded in a way that hinted at a future romance. But when season two begins, Sydney is noticeably awkward around Marcus and, in an entirely different way, around her business partner Carmi. The implication is that Sydney is not interested in Marcus, but might be interested in her culinary idol. There's still conflict between them. She wants a Michelin star, he doesn't care, but also palpable chemistry. Then, Carmi bumps into Claire just when he and Sid were about to embark on a restaurant tour to reset their palates. Instead, Sydney has to go it alone, setting up a subtle and well-balanced love triangle. At least he's hanging out with Claire. I mean, that seems moderately healthy, right? Who's Claire? Sydney's able to table her complicated feelings for Carmi, but she can't ignore the fact that his budding relationship with Claire is getting in the way of their working relationship. Her father and her contacts within the industry warn her that she shouldn't make this leap with someone she doesn't trust. Carmi's divided attention puts more weight on her shoulders, which makes her question whether she's doing the right thing. Getting in the way of practical matters like finalizing the menu and fixing broken refrigerator handles is the uncomfortable idea that maybe she's jealous of Claire. Even so, it's Sid who encourages Carmi to admit she's his girlfriend. With only days left to open, Sid wonders where she stands with Carmi, personally and professionally. Season 2 opens with Marcus sitting next to someone in a hospital bed, lovingly rubbing their hands. We learn his mother is terminally ill and caring for her has taken a toll on him. A once promising football prospect, Marcus worked his way up from fast food to Carmi's kitchen to support her and remain close by. While the restaurant is being deep cleaned, he's given the opportunity to stage for a chef in Copenhagen. As once in a lifetime as the trip is, he frets about leaving his mother behind. Marcus comes alive once abroad, studying under Chef Luca. At first, he's so intimidated he can't operate a pair of tweezers. Without mentioning Carmi by name, Luca tells Marcus that one chef made him realize he wasn't the best in the world and he didn't have to be, which took off some pressure. Luca used the kitchen to better himself and make the most of his life. He suggests that Marcus do the same and teaches him to be confident, open, and inspired. 
While walking home one night, Marcus happens upon a local who's been in a terrible bicycle accident. He rescues the man, who thanks him and rides away. The incident is a symbolic lesson in the selflessness of service that parallels his experience with his mother and as a chef. When Marcus returns to Chicago, he's not only written recipes for three new desserts, he has a new outlook on life and an improved perspective of his own self-worth. Line Cook Tina wasn't a particularly likable character in season one, but started to come around by the final episode, and at the very start of season two, it's clear that she's all in on the bear. While Carmi, Sydney, and Sugar try to put out little fires everywhere, Tina sucks up to the chef she once resented, clearly angling for a promotion. It isn't long at all before she gets her wish. The new chef de cuisine offers her the job almost apologetically. She assumes the longtime employee who was so set in her ways won't want to put in the time to do what it'll take. But Tina enthusiastically accepts her invitation to attend culinary school while the restaurant is being renovated. Carmi lends, and ultimately gifts, her his chef's knife, and Tina learns to see herself in a new light when she excels in the program. We can deduce that Tina's thorny personality was a result of her insecurities. Deep down, her lack of a formal education made her feel defensive, and the way she perks up when asked to join other students at a bar indicates that she may not have had many friends. Though she dreaded it, all the change that's happening at the sandwich shop has worked out in Tina's favor. Let's be honest, this is Richie's season. The once problem-causing cousin of the Berzados is a changed man, and it's all thanks to some streaky forks. But before Carmi sends Richie to work at his old world-renowned restaurant, we learn a little about the brash sandwich wrapper's backstory during episode six. Natalie, I'm not like this because I'm in Van Halen. I am in Van Halen because I'm like this. Not so long ago, Richie was a doting husband with a kid on the way. His wife, Tiffany, wanted more out of life, including a nice house in a good school district, so he lied to her about already having secured a job with Jimmy. The years between this uncomfortable moment at Christmas dinner and the present are still a mystery, so we don't know exactly what went down with the job or their marriage. Back to those forks. His bad attitude results in a stern talking to by Garrett, who orders him to respect himself and the restaurant. A switch flips in Richie's brain. He begins to embrace the commitment that's required to execute high-end service, and by the time he hand-delivers a deep-dish pizza, he's completely intoxicated with the idea. After a full-throated Taylor Swift jam session in his car, Richie returns to the bear ready to run front of house like a rock star. But first, he apologizes to Sugar and comes to terms with the fact that Tiffany is getting remarried. Richie's new threads are a metaphor. He realizes Carmi didn't send him away to get him out of his hair. He gave him the chance to become who he's always wanted to be. With a sure-to-be legendary episode six, the bear shows us what life was like for Carmi, Sugar, and the other characters in the Berzato family's orbit. It's Christmas Eve, and Carmi is home to celebrate with his mother's traditional Italian seven fishes. I make things beautiful for them. No one makes things beautiful for me. The customary seafood dishes and bears become loaded metaphors. Stevie gives a blessing about love demonstrated through service and sacrifice, and the guests debate whether bears are empathetic, aggressive, or both. For the Bearzados, it's both. An unstable Donna loses her cool more than once. She melts down as she violently grabs Sugar by the chin, then again at dinner when she doesn't feel properly appreciated and her daughter dares to ask if she's okay. Finally, Donna drives her car into the house as Sugar watches in horrified disbelief. It's clear that she and Sugar have a toxic relationship in which the child feels more responsibility for the well-being of the parent rather than the other way around. Carmi, meanwhile, is more focused on Mikey. Though he won't fully realize the seriousness of his brother's illness until after his death, it's becoming apparent to Carmi that Mikey and his family are plagued by generational trauma. His cousin Michelle sees it too and offers him refuge. He's left to decide whether he should stay and try to fix his family or whether he's better off alone and away. It's a question he's still wrestling with leading into the finale. In episode 10, titled The Bear, the new restaurant soft opens for friends and family. Marcus has perfected four new desserts, including a savory take on cannoli that he's dubbed the Michael in honor of the madness and genius that was their former boss. Tina is seamlessly executing more refined dishes. Richie is thriving as the maitre d'. Sydney proudly dons the monogrammed chef's coat that her partners gifted her. But Carmi's feeling the heat and can't be bothered to visit Claire in the dining room. The walk-in door handle, which has been loose all season, breaks off, trapping the executive chef inside just as orders begin to come in rapid fire and one of the new hires goes missing. That's okay. Maybe that just is. He's stuck in the walk-in? Yeah. 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 With Carmi literally on ice, the staff rises to the challenge. We can see that Carmi has helped to improve everyone else's station but his own. The crew are all more functional than they were when the series started, 
but Carmi's having an existential crisis in a refrigerator. Besides Carmi's predicament, Pete spots a still unwell Donna outside. She can't bring herself to come in, and Sugar's left assuming her mom wasn't proud enough to show. Though the night is a success from the patron's perspective, it's still full of stress behind the scenes, most of which is brought on by Carmi's unresolved issues. Season 2 of The Bear is mainly about whether the new restaurant will open on schedule, and that question is more or less answered by the finale. But on a character level, there's still plenty of unfinished business to be addressed in Season 3. It's possible that a reformed Richie could try to reconcile with Tiffany before the wedding. Sugar is still pregnant, which means next season we'll almost certainly see the birth of her child. But the bigger looming questions have to do with Carmi, Sydney, and Marcus. While Carmi's fridged, he has a panic attack during which his memories of Claire are intercut with his memories of Sydney. He's been in love with Claire all his life, but the thought of Sydney is what pulls him out of his spiral. In the previous episode, the two supported each other as they repaired a table. And with Claire standing just outside the walk-in, Carmi delivers a monologue she definitely wasn't supposed to hear. We'll find out whether he can juggle his love life and his work life in part three. Similarly, Sydney flubs acting normally around Marcus, who asks her out just before the dinner rush begins. When she rebuffs him, he's hurt and takes it out on her for most of the night. Regardless of whether Claire returns, the next love triangle looks to be between Carmi, Sydney, and Marcus. Finally, season two ends how it began, with Marcus's mom. In the pandemonium of opening, his worst fear comes true as he misses multiple calls from her nurse, signaling tragic news. As of the making of this video, the bear has neither been renewed or canceled, but all signs point to an eventual renewal announcement. If the show does get another green light, expect the series to return no earlier than June 2024, as seasons 1 and 2 dropped in June 2022 and 2023, respectively.